Well, hey there, boys and girls, and welcome back to Richard's Toy Room for another great model review. This here is what they call a concept car. Um, in the past, they were called dream cars. Same thing. Um, this is one that never got built, unfortunately. It's kind of a really cool uh, throwback, I guess, uh, retro design that Chrysler did in the 90s. This is a Lindbergh kit. And uh, this is one of the ones that was made in China, unfortunately. Um, it's uh, dated 2007. Now, I believe the concept car came out. Oh, I don't have that information in front of me, but I believe it was in the early 90s or the late 90s. I actually saw this car. I remember seeing it at the car show. I just can't remember what year it was. Um, usually I try to do my research before I start the video, and for some reason that was the one thing I didn't look up. Oh, and before you start thinking that I'm like wearing some stained up shirt or something, this is actually designed to be like this. Uh, it's sort of like a tie-dye-ish kind of shirt. It's actually just one of my uh, beat around the house, you know, shirts I don't wear out in public, but uh, just happen to be wearing it today. Anyhow, so this is a 125th scale kit and um, doesn't have a whole lot of parts, but it's nice. I looked at, through everything and it's pretty nicely detailed. Um, this is one of those odd boxes that kind of opens up like this with the lid still attached. And, uh, I, I haven't run across one like this yet. It also has a, a stiffener in it to keep the box from crushing. Not that that makes any big difference, but uh, if you want to take a look at the box while we got it out here. And the back. I can't remember when I got this, but I've had it for a while. I don't know if it's still available. Probably not. But um, let's take a look at the uh, instruction sheet for a second. It's one sheet, one piece of paper. Starts over here with just a bunch of gibberish, like uh, every language you could think of, and uh, then, as you can see, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but uh, you can just see how it uh, everything goes together. I don't think this is a snap together kit, but um, it might not. Uh, some of the things may may snap. It, it has the looks of uh, a lot of snap together ish parts, but it doesn't actually call it a snap kit. And then the uh, back is the finish of, of that. So let me get the parts out here in front of me and um, then I'll adjust the camera and I'll give you a look at what's in the kit. All right, so this these are all the parts in the kit. Now you may look at this and go, Richard, did you take all these parts off of the sprues? And I would say to you, loyal watcher no they actually came in a bunch of little bags um the body chassis and interior came in one bag uh, the other um, body colored parts came in another one the interior parts even loose was the little boy i can barely even pick it up here i don't lose it <laughs> the little gear shift it was loose in the bag with a little steering wheel and the dashboard and the seats tires came in another bag and the chrome came in two separate bags and then you have a little bag with your metal axles and a couple of three screws to hold the body together. And I don't want to take these out yet, but you got your windshield, one piece front and back, and then some, I think there's a like headlights or a couple of marker lights or something. And then a little decal sheet with tiny little decals and some emblems. Um, got your interior.
chassis pan. Showed you the seats. Here's the uh, front and rear bumpers. The doors, oddly, are separate, but they don't open. Because on this car, if you're familiar with it, the doors open like, like this. Like they pivot open. And they did not uh, design it like that. This little piece here, is just a like a, a spacer that goes underneath between the uh, hood and the and the chassis where the engine would be of course you don't get an engine because the hood does not open I think this is like to keep it from like crushing or something or stabilize it or whatever and then your uh, side mirrors and of course the body very nice I thought about maybe just clear coating this, but then I saw that there's some like, um, like down here, I don't know if you can see it, like there's like some squirrels in the plastic, which is common on these injection molded kits. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll paint it another color. They only, this, this only made this one that I know of. I, I did look up online to see if there was any other uh, colors. I did see a red one, um, which I think was just somebody's, you know, they made it up uh, like a, what do they call that? Uh, Photoshop or something. Um, but um, this car only came in this gold color. So I think I'll probably just uh, paint it uh, whatever shade of gold that I have. I have, a, I have a shade of gold that's really close to this. So I'll keep it as original as, you know, possible. So like I said, thought about doing a weird color on it. Not weird, but you know, just uh, just to be different, but I don't know, it might look, it might look odd like that. I even thought about doing it like a two-tone. Um, here's like your uh, grill, some um, emblems, and uh, your uh, exhaust pipes. And then you got these big old rims, pretty detailed. No backs to them, really. But you won't really see them anyway. They do give you some stickers, I think, that go in the center. I mean, uh, decals. And I showed you these parts. And the only thing left are these tires. They are brand name Goodyear tires, and they look like there are two different sizes, from what I can tell. Looking here, it looks like there's front and rear. It looks like the rears are just just a little bit bigger. It's it's, it's almost hard to tell, but. And they look like they are uh, unidirectional tread on them, although I'm not seeing any markings on the side, so I guess you just have to pay attention when you're putting them together to, if you want them all, the treads to all match. And uh, that's it. So, assuming, uh, you know, I can get a decent paint job on this thing, um, shouldn't be that hard of a kit to put together. I don't think there's, oh, there's not a whole lot of detailing uh, there might be some, um, like here's with the, the door on. There might be some uh, detailing that I have to do on the glass. Um, yeah, in fact, now that I'm looking at it, I can see it. There's like a black edge around it. It's funny, I'm looking in here and there is no side window glass. So... That's interesting. So the, the side window glass will be open on the model. All right then, so into the paint booth we go and uh, we'll be back. Um, probably give you a mid-build update uh, before we go to the final reveal. So stay tuned. So hey, just a quick update on this uh, Atlantic model here. So what I did was, I just took and I did a, a 
matte finish uh, gloss, uh, gloss matte. Yeah, I did a gloss matte finish. No, <laughs> I did a uh, spray matte uh, finish on the bottom here. Can, there's a slight difference, you can tell. And then I looked up some pictures of the actual model. I really couldn't find anything showing the underneath. Um, I found one, but I'm not even 100% sure it was of this car because that was, it was like the only picture. And Anyway, so I'm not sure if it was supposed to be body color underneath like most, a lot of cars are. But I just left it black because that's what it was molded in. And I'm just going to go over with like a silver sharpie, like maybe like the exhaust, maybe the bottom of the engine, something like that. Maybe the gas tank too, I'm not sure yet. Um, just a little detail. I mean, honestly, nobody ever looks on the bottom of models. I mean, I can't remember the last time I picked one up and looked underneath it. Um, I did throw the decals on the uh, center of the rims. Um, probably can't really see them. You might see them on the uh, round, roundabout turntable at the end, but they're like absolutely tiny. <laughs> um, this is that spacer I was telling you about. I just glued that in just so in case it wanted to like kind of get loose and rattle around in there. So, uh, and then, uh, see, I put the wheels on, the axles. That was pretty simple. The wheels just popped into the rubber tires. I did uh, sand the tread so they look more realistic. So basically, that's where we are at this point. But I also wanted to point out something that I made a mistake on. I must have been thinking of a different... Um, a different... Uh, dream car, uh, concept car, because this, the doors on this, in pictures I have seen, do just open normally like that. They don't go up like this, like I said earlier in the video. That was a different car. In fact, I think it had suicide doors and both doors open from the middle up, like, uh, where's the other door? I'll kind of give you an idea. Like if it was like this, they opened like that. Then met well. I guess this would be a better example. <laughs> they met in the middle like that, and and then opened. Anyway, you get the idea. So this has normal doors on it, not um, not the uh, ones that hinge forward. And it looked like the interior has actually got some two tone to it. So I'm going to have to uh, do some taping off and. Uh, I'm going to try to duplicate that as much as I can on this as well. You know, I like to do what I can to add some detail. So anyway, that's where we are at this point. No, uh, nothing that big. I just wanted to point out those couple of things. Um, and uh, stay tuned. Okay, so I guess I should get this over with. Once again, you have no clue, but... I finished this model, oh good lord, I can't even tell you how long ago, it's been months. I just have not had the ambition to get it up on this turntable and just finish this video off. So anyway, and I'll explain to you why, and it'll be very apparent in about uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> and so. It, this almost turned out to be a perfect model. I mean, I do recommend this kit. It goes together very nicely. It's a very striking uh, result when you're done with it. Um, the paint's a little different than what the uh, original car is, but I think I explained that earlier in the video. Um, had uh, ran out of the paint that was closer <laughs> but anyhow um, the only real major problems I had with this were the doors fitting and there is where I ran into the main issue that I'm uh, talking about um, it'll be very plainly clear when uh, you get to close up on this it may not show up as much right now but right here if you keep your eye open, right around the top of this uh, right door between the windows and just above the uh, on the roof, 
I had to, because the doors were a little troublesome, I had to trim off kind of the little pins that made them fit, at least on one of them. I can't remember which side. I think it was this side. And then um, they actually do recommend to, um, I don't know if they said tape in the direction or rubber band or whatever, but hold the doors in place while they dry with the glue. Um, problem was, and I should have known because I ran into this before with metallic paint, I clear coated this over the, the gold and I put magic scotch tape on, not horribly, you know, uh, I didn't rub it in real tight or anything, but um, when I pulled it off, it pulled the clear coat off down to the dull gold underneath. I was just so upset. And I did not want to start over again. I mean, I was literally done. I mean, it was just a few tiny little pieces I had to pop on. And there's just no way I was going to do this over again. So I just uh, took some of the clear coat and I tried to brush it and feather it in so it wasn't as noticeable. It kind of started to attack the paint a little bit and kind of took away the smooth look of it. And uh, like I said, once I get uh, this spinning and you get some more close-ups, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it just, it just like made me so upset that I just th threw the towel in on it. And I just like, ugh. but I had to get it done because I mean, you guys have been waiting to see this, right? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's get on with the turntable and, um, just say thanks for watching now and um, got tons more videos in the pipe. Um, I kind of get to them as I can get the ambition to do them. I've got uh, another Lincoln Continental video coming up probably right after this one. I've already got it all filmed. I just have to edit it. And I uh, probably have at least three more toy ones that might come up pretty soon. I just was um, waiting for some things to happen with them, and I, I, I got the parts or whatever that I needed to finish them out. So, without further ado, the Chrysler Atlantic.